Come on, bless and praise our God. Come on, give thanks to a God who's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Miss Crystal Walker, for leading us in worship on tonight. It's just what we needed to hear. And uh, certainly appreciate your gift and your talent. Lord, we thank you for tonight. Bless us as we come tonight to hear word for you. No shape, form, or fashion. But we come to hear from you. Please speak, Lord, for thy servants are listening. We need to hear word from you. We've heard from everybody else. Now it's time that we hear from you. Speak now. Our servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. Let's do this one verse together. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Let's do it together. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savior, wherewith shall it be salted? Good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm going to take text tonight with the subject, Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt of the earth. What did Jesus mean when he said, ye are salt? I would think he could have named a number of things that I would like to be other than salt. What is the significance and the importance, the relevance of salt? Ebonically speaking, Salt has a negative connotation in the African-American community. If somebody say they throwing salt on you, that's not very good. If someone say they acting salty, come to your party and acting all salty, that's, that, that, that's not a good representation. Uh, what does he mean when he say, Ye are the salt of the earth. Uh, I want to suggest tonight he's saying, number one, if you don't get nothing else, please get this tonight. I want to suggest he's saying that you are different, distinct, and divine. You are different, distinct, and divine. Stop trying to blend in and fit in with everything and everybody. It's not intended for you to fit in and blend in with everybody. It's cool that we can't be hanging buddies. It's fine that you are, I'm not invited to your house. But, but because we're not all intended to mix and blend. Oh, I love you. I thank God for you. But we have to move from imitation and trying to be accepted so much until we give up who we are. You are unique and distinct. God made you the way he made you. Celebrate your uniqueness. The way you talk. People used to make fun of the way I talk. Say I talk slow. Say I talk with a southern accent. A lot of times I kept quiet because I didn't like people mimicking the way I talk. And now the Lord bless me to travel for folks to hear me talk. But celebrate who you are. Celebrate your uniqueness. I remember uh, Pastor David Boyle, one of my mentors, yes, uh, particularly when I was going to preach at a church, he would always encourage me to just be myself. Yes. 
and they will appreciate the uniqueness of you. Because when you are a new preacher, you want acceptance, you want, uh, of course, to please God, but at the same time, you want acceptance from the people. And he would always tell me, they will appreciate your uniqueness because God has made us distinct, different, and for his divine purpose. First Peter chapter 2 says, For ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. For the purpose of showing forth the praises of him who have brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So it's not people who validate. It's God who validates. And when you understand it's God who validates you, it's God who has ordained you and sanctioned you, celebrate who you are. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I like who I am. I like the person I see in the mirror. Now, I may not fit your description, but I, I like who God has made me. And, and I walk with royalty. I walk as a peculiar people because I understand God has made me different, distinct, and divine for his purpose. Well, Jesus is on the mountain teaching these hard sayings, what we know as the Beatitudes. He's a revolutionist. He is radical in his teaching. And he tells them, I need you all to be as salt, to be the salt of the earth. To be a change agent. To be a difference maker. To impact the world. Y'all know the difference between a thermometer and a thermostat. The Lord says, I want you to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. A thermometer only measures the temperature in the room. But a thermostat has the power to change the temperature. And the Lord says, I want you to be a change agent. Because you're a change agent, you make everything better. New Hope is a better church. You know why? Hopefully, because you are here. Your pew is a better pew. Your row is a better row. Your section is a better section. The choir is a better choir. The, the music ministry is a better music ministry because you have been planted there to be the salt. You are the change agent to make everything better. That drama that's taking place in your family, God said, I want you to be the salt in your family. Injustice that's happening in our community, I want you to be the change agent to bring about the change. I don't want you to just be a thermometer. Be a thermostat. Be the salt that makes the difference and to change situation, circumstances. Things should be better because you're there. Your job should be a better place of employment because you are there. Your neighborhood should be a better neighborhood because you are there. What does salt do? A number of things salt do. And I'm just about done, y'all. Stay with me here. I'm going to get you home before rain start again. Salt, number one, sanitize. Salt, sanitize. Salt is made up of sodium chloride, NaCl. 
Scientists have come to the conclusion that the ocean, because of its salt, has minimizes disease that are on the land. Matter of fact, if you can't get to water, put a little salt in your hand and rub it together because salt sanitizes, it purifies everything that it touches. Not only does salt sanitize, salt saves. Salt preserves. I told you I'm, I'm both city and country boy. We spent our, our summers in the country. Wasn't going to no summer camp. We went to grandmama's house in the country. And I learned how to slop hogs and, and uh, pick corn, peas, and so forth. You understand. Shuck corn. There you go. But, but the amazing thing, in the summer, we would be eating a fresh piece of hog from the winter. Because we would put the meat in the meat house and they would pack it down, smokehouse if you will, pack it down, I got some folks from the country correcting me, pack it down with salt. And you're talking about a fresh piece of meat. I know you, you, you with deep freezers, but there was something about that smokehouse that that meat was preserved because salt saves. Salt sanitizes. Salt saves. But then salt also season. Salt gives flavor. My sister, when we were growing up, mama started working and my sister had the cooking duties. And uh, she was a, I, I hope we ain't feminists, edit this part. She was a horrible cook. But like anybody who starts cooking, you ain't good when you first start. So she was not good and me and my brother dread eating my sister's cooking. But we knew one thing we had going for us. We would get salt and pepper because salt and pepper made it taste better. It added flavor to it. And the Lord says, I want you to be flavorable. I, I, I want you to add flavor to new hope. I want you to add flavor to your home. I want you to add flavor to your family. Make it flavorful. But then lastly, salt is the source of life. You need salt. Our problem is we use too much, but you do need salt to survive. You need salt. Now, I know many times before we even taste our food like I did with my sister, uh, but many times we don't even need to put salt in our food. It's already in there. We don't even, we don't even taste it. We just go shaking with the salt. And, and that consequently, we end up taking on too much salt and ended up with high blood pressure. But salt is essential and necessary for living and life. And so salt becomes that which is necessary, valuable, and essential. And so we cannot afford to lose our saltiness. A couple of things about this salt here, and I will get out of your way. Ye are the salt of the earth. Listen to what he says. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savior, if the salt lose that which makes it valuable, if the salt lose that which makes it lose what it is intended to be and to do, then it becomes depreciated. Don't allow the salt to depreciate. The only way the salt does not depreciate is that when we fulfill our purpose and goal in which God has made us to be, to make communities better, schools better, 
religious organizations better. We cannot afford to allow our saltiness to depreciate. And the way that happened, we must again be who God has made us and has called us to be. I remember my first revival in South Carolina, where my first revival out of town was in South Carolina. I was the star of a five-night revival in South Carolina. And I remember leaving Sunday evening right after church, driving to South Carolina. Pastor Ray knew I was a little nervous. He prayed for me, had church to pray for me. And it's the first time I'm going that far out of town for revival, not knowing what to expect, not knowing what they were expecting of me. So I'm a little shaky and nervous. And I get there that first night. And many of my invitations early on started because of my connection with Pastor Ray. And I thought, well, maybe they wanted to hear Pastor Ray. So that first night, I gave my best Pastor Ray sermon and impression. Needless to say, I failed miserably. Second night, I said, well, I won't do Frank Ray. I'm going to do Jasper Williams. So I did my best. Jasper Williams impersonation failed miserably. I failed because Monday night, Frank Ray wasn't there and I wasn't there. Tuesday night, Jasper wasn't there and I wasn't there. But Wednesday, I decided I'm going to be who God made me to be. And do the best that I can with the tools God gave me. I never shall forget I finished that night and one of the mothers came walking. You know these mothers are so bold, they just say anything. These old folks get on my nerves, just think they can say anything to you because you're young. She came up to me and she said, well, the revival has finally started. That Wednesday night. And I couldn't say nothing because she was absolutely, positively right. The revival had just started because I just showed up. And when you are yourself, when you are being who you are, God can use you because he did not make you to be somebody else. And the best person you can be in anything is being yourself. And if they don't like you, that's all right, but be you. If they can't put up with you, that's all right, but be you. God will find some people who will like what you do who will like how you sound and how you preach and how you sing. God will give you your crowd, but you cannot be somebody else. So don't allow it to depreciate because if it lose its savior, if it lose what it is intended to do, what good is it? Not only don't allow it to appreciate. But don't allow it to be destroyed. Look what else it says. If him forth good for north, nothing, but to be cast out. Don't allow it to be destroyed. Listen to me, New Hope. When you lose your purpose, there is no justification for your existence. I think I need to see that 52 more times. That when you lose your purpose, there is no justification for your existence. This bottle of water here. Once I finish this water, you know what I'm going to do with the bottle? Throw it away. I have no use for the bottle. The value is what's in it. And once I drink what is in it, it no longer has value. And so in order for us to fulfill 
our lives and have a meaningful life, we must understand and know what our purpose is. Problem, the tragedy of it is, people have lived 40, 50, 60, and even 70 years and have not discovered their purpose. Don't know why you here just, just rumbling, just aimlessly going, not understanding God has a plan and a purpose for your life. This is why you are so empty and void is because you don't know your purpose. But purpose equals fulfillment. That's why I got joy, happiness, and peace because I understand my purpose. I'm just as happy as I can be right now, y'all. Because I'm doing what God has called me to do. I have fulfillment. It's greater than having money in the bank. Fulfillment is greater than having materials, houses, cars, and land. It's greater than having popularity and fame. Having contentment and knowing that you are doing what God has called you to do. Let me, let me talk to somebody here who, who, who understands fulfillment and understand purpose. Some of y'all have the gift of hospitality, sharing, and uplifting. Some of you have gone to places where you fed the homeless, clothed the homeless help children, uh, uh, been an assistant to people who are sick and shedding. I can't tell you the fulfillment that comes through that. That that is a feeling that God gives you, that gives you so much joy and peace when you're doing what God has called you to do. It gives you more than what money can bring. So don't allow it to be destroyed because if we're not walking in our purpose, we may as well be cast out, thrown away. We're no good to ourselves or anybody else. God has given you purpose in life. So not only will you be a blessing to others, you will be a blessing to yourself. You, you, you see, when God gives you a ministry, I will just talk with our intercessory prayer ministry. When God gives you a ministry, whether folks show up to pray or not, you pray. And when you pray, God will give you a peace that passes all understanding. I would even venture to say, a few choir members here tonight, I venture to say that when you get to a place where you are depressed and down, sometimes you can just sing your way through. Because God has given you a purpose, given you a voice. I would even imagine these musicians sometimes when they get to a place, they need a revelation and they need to experience God, that they will just get on their instruments sometimes. And just play until the spirit of the Lord come down. And I know I'm talking to preachers because I've experienced this. Sometimes all I need is just let me get to the pulpit. My, my week have been turned upside down, but just let me get to the pulpit. And the Lord uses our purpose. He uses our gifts. So not only does it minister to others, but it, reminister, it ministers to us. Thirdly, the text says that we cannot allow it to lose its safe. That if we do, it is nothing, it's good for nothing but to be cast out. And here's the third point to be trotted under the foot of me. Don't allow the salt to be dysfunctional, to be under the foot of me and that is not the purpose and the place designed for salt 
Salt is not designed to be trampled under the foot of men. And so it becomes dysfunctional problem. The problem with dysfunctional is that we can get comfortable with things in its dysfunctional state. I think I will stay here a minute. We can get comfortable. Sometimes you can be in a bad situation for so long that you get comfortable with the bad situation. And you think this is the norm that I'm supposed to. You bagging me up, Reds. Appreciate that. We think we're supposed to be treated this way. We think it's supposed to go down like this in a marriage. Because we get used to things being in a dysfunctional state. Let me give you an example. If you're from the hood like I was from, that flow model TV, when it went out, you didn't throw it out. That flow model became a stand for the next TV. That when that one went out, you got another TV and you set it on top of that TV. And the old TV becomes a stand and we got comfortable with. And it got so bad sometimes that TV will become a stand for the third TV and we got stacks of TV. And the first two ain't working. They just holding the last one up. Comfortable in things in their dysfunction. The knob break on the changing of channel. You get wire pliers. Vice grip. And chain. Y'all acting like y'all ain't from the hood. I wish. Don't make me come out there and call your name now. You get vice grips. Wire pliers. And change the TV. You get comfortable in dysfunction. When the antenna broke on the TV, you got a coat hanger. And the coat hanger became the antenna. Because we get comfortable in dysfunction. And the challenge becomes, ladies and gentlemen, we can never allow dysfunction to be the norm. And to get comfortable with that which is dysfunction, no. Because in essence, we'll end up hurting ourselves and hurting generations behind us. Because we've gotten so comfortable with things being so dysfunctional. So much dysfunctional that even in, in family and in family drama and family situations, stuff we don't even talk about because of the dysfunction of our past. But I hold those dysfunction must be addressed because when we live in them, we find ourselves living in this dysfunction. Let me leave you and tell you. I see it's not only raining on the outside, there's a little rain on the inside. Let me, let me, let me get this last one and uh, we'll all go home together. So don't allow it to depreciate. Don't allow it to be destroyed. And don't allow it to be dysfunctional. I want to push another one on it because the salt is, 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 is given as this illustration to be displayed. Allow it to be displayed. That we are to walk, talk, and act in a way that we become change agents from hate to love. Change agents from chaos to peace. Change, just, change agents from injustice to justice. Change agents from sadness to joy. Amen. Salt is designed not to consume itself, but it is designed to be used. Here is the million dollar question tonight. Can God use you? That's the million dollar question. God want to know can I use you 
to be a change agent. Now, I'm getting in the next week lesson because next week lesson exposes why we want, why it, we need to, to allow ourselves to be used, and that is for the glory of God. Let your light show sign. So men see your good work and glorify your father. God want to know tonight, this is question tonight, can you be used? Will you avail yourself to be used by God? That's the, that's the question. That's the issue with salt. Salt is designed to be used to change. And I wish I had a few salty people here tonight that could change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere of, of worship. Change the atmosphere of praise. I wish I had a few salty people who can change ministry and change church. I wish I had a few salty people who will make the difference so much so, you know, salt has a way of dehydrating. Salt has a way of making somebody else thirsty or making you thirsty. And so if you're salty enough, maybe you can cause a thirst for God or cause someone else to be thirsty for God. I wish I had about... I ain't got but about 10 in here tonight. I wish I had about five tonight who will be salty enough to let's change this atmosphere, to be salty enough to change our community, to be salty enough to change where we work. The question is, can God use you? But most of us won't to be used for our own edification. Most of us want to be used for our own benefit. But when God uses us, it's not for us, but for his glory. And is there anybody besides me understand that the devil gets no glory? All the glory belongs to the Lord. All of my trials, all of my struggles, all of my ups and downs, it all belongs. To the Lord. I give God the glory. Lord says, I want you to be. Be salt. Know you're different. Know you're distinct. And know you're divine. God want to use you for his purpose. To be a change agent for the world. I hear people talk all the time. Talking about church is this, church is that. But be the change you want to see. You want to see a church on fire? Well, you come in here on fire. You want to see a church that love God? You love God. If you want to see a church that's praying? You come in praying. Be the change you want to see. And allow God to salt your life so that you can be a change agent. For someone else. And the people of God said amen. Come on, put our hands together. Bless and praise our God. Amen, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Urge is coming. Let's prepare now to worship in giving.